Welcome to the IBM Smart Business Development and Test on the IBM Cloud. As a member of the team, I would like to show you just how easy it can be to establish a virtual LAN on the IBM Smart Business Development and Test on the IBM Cloud. Virtual LANs, also known as VLANs, isolate a group of network devices from the Internet. This type of configuration provides additional privacy and scalability. After I decide that my company requires a VLAN, I would contact the IBM representative who created my contract for the IBM development and test on the IBM cloud. My IBM rep would update my contract to include VLAN services. And then once IBM established the VLAN, I will be able to provision instances onto my private virtual LAN. To change my contract to include a VLAN, I must complete two forms. The Premium Services Order Form is located at IBM's Developer Works website. I can obtain the second document, the IBM New Customer VPN Boarding Form, from my IBM rep. To locate the Premium Services Order Form, I go to the Support tab and then click Visit Our Support Community Site. I log on to IBM's Developer Works website. In the upper right-hand corner, I will select Files, then type Premium Support, and then click the Magnifying Glass button. The Search Results panel appears, and then I will click the Cloud Service Premium Serve Order Form, which is a PDF file. I will complete the Premium Services Order Form and return it to my IBM rep. The rep will then send a customized IBM New Customer VPN boarding form to me, which I complete and return. After the form is processed, IBM notifies me that my VLAN is ready. So now, when I create a new instance, I can choose whether it will be connected to the public Internet or will be isolated on my new private VLAN. Please note, all of my existing instances currently running on the public Internet will continue to work as usual. Once I have received an email informing me that my VLAN is established, I must consider whether I need IP addresses that are dynamically allocated or IP addresses that are static. Many applications these days use dynamically allocated IP addresses, but for the sake of illustration, I will show how I would create a static IP address for my VLAN. I will call this type of IP address a private static IP address. Private denotes that it will be used on a VLAN only, and static denotes that the application uses this one specific IP address rather than being dynamically allocated any available IP address. First, I click on the Accounts tab. The orange text below the table marked Your IPs shows that I have not configured any private IP addresses and that two public IP addresses are available. Let's consider three cases. In case number one, if my cloud-based applications required one or two IP addresses for public Internet use, then I can begin creating a public instance since two public static IP addresses are in free status. In case number two, if I had a public Internet instance that requires three reserved IP addresses, then I would click Add IP to create another public static IP address. Once created, I would then have three IP addresses that would be available to use for an instance running on the public Internet. In case number three, which we will cover in this demo, I will assume that I have a private instance running on my VLAN that requires one private static Internet IP address. The term private indicates that it is reserved for VLAN use only. So to get started, I click Add IP. The panel that pops up is similar to the one inside the Instance Creation Wizard. I choose the data center that is closest to the team that will be using this application. The next drop-down list is labeled VLAN. I change the selection from Public Internet to My VLAN. This step configures my static IP address to run on My VLAN. If I had selected Public Internet, then the static IP address could only be used for instances running on the Public Internet. In this case, it is for my private VLAN, so I select this option and then I click Submit. We see the progress indicator spin for a few seconds and then the message tells us that the request has been submitted. I click Close to return to the main panel. And when the status moves from New to Allocating to Free, it's ready for me to use. The specific IP address is now visible. 
The orange row of text below the table shows that I now have one of five private IP addresses available for use. The VLAN column in the IP table shows this IP will be part of my VLAN. Now, when I create an instance within my VLAN, I can use this available private static IP address. Now I will create an instance on my VLAN. The panels are the same as the ones I used for the public Internet instances. I click on Add Instance and then select the image I will use on the VLAN. I click Next and at the configuration image pop-up, I name this instance Private VLAN Eagle Claw. Now, for the first time, there's a VLAN choice in the middle of the panel. I switch the selection from Public Internet to the name of my private VLAN. When I select this choice, this instance will be established on my private network. If I selected Public Internet, the instance would be accessible from the Internet. The next step is to add the private, static IP address that we configured earlier. I will click on the Select IP drop-down list and select the IP address visible in the list. Please note, if there are no IP addresses in the list, then I probably made a mistake and forgot to configure a fixed IP address before coming into the Create an Instance on my VLAN. If that is true, I would need to leave this sequence of panels and return to the Accounts tab to create a fixed IP address first. At this point, I have one primary, static IP address configured for my instance. Normally, I would be ready to complete configuration for this instance. However, let me briefly discuss how to set up secondary IP addresses. The first IP address is called the primary IP address. All IP addresses added after the first one are called, by definition, secondary IP addresses. If I need one or more secondary static IP addresses, I must add those secondary static IP addresses earlier from the My IPs table. I must do this before creating the instance. Also, all secondary IP addresses are inactive. If I add any secondary IP addresses, I must activate them manually after the instance has been provisioned. For further information, see Activating Secondary IPs in the User's Guide. Okay, so to add a secondary IP address, I would click on the Add IP button for the field entitled Virtual IP. Remember, the term secondary IP address is equivalent to the term virtual IP address. The Assign Virtual IP dialog would pop up. I see one or more IP addresses in the drop-down list and select the one that I need, and then click the Add IP button. However, in this example, we only need one static IP address, so I will click Close on this panel. And my primary static IP address is visible in the Select IP entry field. I'm ready to advance to the next panel, so I click Next. I validate the configuration and then click Next. When I see the Service Agreement panel, I read, and if I approve the details, I select the I Agree choice. After I click Submit, I see the Progress Indicator spin, and then the Request Submitted Successfully message is displayed. I click Close here and now I see my instance running on the VLAN as a row with my other instances. Here's a quick tip. The Manage Users function allows me to control the number of private IP addresses any user can configure for the VLAN. On the Account tab, I can select the user, then click Edit, and the Max Number of Private IP Addresses field gives me control over the quantity of private IP addresses for each user. Finally, if I would like to delete my VLAN services permanently, I must first delete all instances and all reserved IP addresses associated with my VLAN. Then I would contact the IBM representative who created my IBM Development and Test on the IBM Cloud contract. The rep would remove VLAN services from my contract, and then IBM will delete my VLAN. Naturally, if I require VLAN services in the future, I can contact my rep to add VLAN into my contract once again. For more information about creating virtual LANs on the IBM Smart Business Development and Test on the IBM Cloud, please visit the support page and check out our video and documentation libraries. To learn more about IBM and its cloud initiatives, please visit ibm.com forward slash cloud. Thank you.